And then Wyden goes on to talk about how uh, this secret law works and how radically expansive it is growing in this uh, behind, without any transparency. Months and years went into trying to find ways to raise public awareness about secret surveillance authorities and to do it within the confines of the classification rules. I and several colleagues made it our mission, our special cause, to end the use of secret law. Now, when the people in my home state hear those words, secret law, several of them come up and say, Ron, what are you talking about? How can the law be kept secret? When you guys pass laws back there, it's like a public deal. I'm going to look this stuff up online. And in response, I tell Oregonians that there are effectively two Patriot Acts. There's one that you can read on your laptop if you're sitting in Medford or Portland, and you can analyze that and understand it. Then there's the real Patriot Act, the secret interpretation of the law that the government actually relies on. The secret rulings of the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court have interpreted the Patriot Act, as well as Section 702 of the FISA statute, in some surprising ways, and those rulings are kept secret from the public. And I can tell you those rulings can be astoundingly broad. Then Wyden goes and explains, and this is something that I have been uh, saying over and over again, uh, but he does it very uh, clearly and succinctly. It's very important to understand how the FISA court evolved from the way it was set up in 1978 as a result of all the work that the Church Commission did uh, in, 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 in investigating the excesses of our spying agencies, how it evolved from that point to where it is today in terms of how the FISA court actually functions. So, uh, clip number four. When the FISA court was created as part of the 1978 FISA law, its work was pretty routine. It was assigned to review government applications for wiretaps and decide whether the government was able to show probable cause. For all you lawyers, it sounds like a garden variety function of district courts and district court judges across the country. In fact, their role was so much like a district court that the judges who make up the FISA court are actually current federal district court judges. After 9-11, the Congress, of course, passed the Patriot Act and the FISA Amendments Act, and this gave the government broad new surveillance powers. These new powers didn't resemble anything in either the criminal law enforcement world or actually the original FISA law. The FISA court got the job of interpreting these new unparalleled authorities of the Patriot Act and the FISA Amendments Act. It was their decision to issue binding secret rulings that interpreted the law and the Constitution in the startling way that has come to light in the last six weeks. They were to issue the decision that the Patriot Act could be used for dragnet bulk surveillance of law-abiding Americans. Outside of the names of the FISA court judges, virtually everything else is secret about the court. Their rulings are secret, which certainly makes challenging them in an appeals process almost impossible. Their proceedings are secret, but I can tell you they're almost always one-sided. The government lawyers walk in, they lay out the argument for why the government ought to be allowed to do something, and the court decides basically on the judge's assessment of the, court's, of the government's arguments. That's not unusual if a court is considering a routine warrant request, but it's very unusual if a court is conducting a major legal or constitutional analysis. I know of no other court in America that strays so far from the adversarial process that has been part of America for centuries. 
And, and that aspect that he's outlining there, the, 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 the body of secret law, the functioning of a secret court, uh, the way that it is in no way conforming to the way that we know courts uh, function in this country, uh, to me, is one of the, uh, the, the most problematic aspects of all of this. Because it, it, it fundamentally short circuits the democratic process, and we cannot make an informed decision as to how far we want our government to go in curtailing our rights to supposedly give us security.